Okay, great, everyone. We're going to continue with our next speaker, Ashley Miller, who's uh, going to spe be speaking on 10 plus knowledge, sharing what you learn for the benefit of every man. Oh, I'm in the habit of saying good morning, but uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is 10 plus knowledge, sharing what you learn for the benefit of the every man, and I am Ashley Miller. So if you're here for another talk, I'm sorry, you'll have to listen to me. And let's get started. There we go. So a little bit about me before we get started. I am a school librarian and computer lab aide. I mostly work with five-year-olds, so I have a, a lot of experience explaining things. I'm also a caregiver for uh, elderly relatives, so my uh, experience goes from five-year-olds to 70-year-olds and everything in between. I like tea, sunsets, and front porch swings. I... I do really well playing Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> and a little fun fact, I developed an interest in locks to cope with fear. And that's actually how I relax. I, I sit and I pick locks. So that's a little bit about me. So our agenda for today, uh, first off, can events like B-Sides help in other areas of your life? What if you're a noob? And, all of this is just brand new to you. What if you don't know anyone? And where do you go from here? And these are some questions I'd like to address during this talk. So starting off with, can events like B-Sides help in other areas of my life? Of course they can. What you learn is not industry specific, and that is uh, an excellent thing about this. For example, with social engineering, I learn a lot just by observing contests and listening to other, uh, other people's talks. And one thing I came away with was that you can interview better by asking questions. In my uh, area in education, if I interview with a different school, even if it's in my own school district, they might ask me questions about specific policies, uh, discipline procedures, and I may not know that answer. I, I, as I said, I'm used to dealing with five-year-olds. I'm not sure how another school would deal with uh, discipline areas with middle school students. So I can turn the question around and not only learn what the answer is, but uh, get information, for, get them to tell me the answer by changing it and asking the question back to them. Uh, using the example of discipline procedures, I may tell them, this is how I handle a discipline procedure at my work site. However, I understand you have a different age group. How would you address that problem? So it gets them to answer the question for me, and it tells them that even though I don't know an answer, I am perfectly willing to ask someone what the, right, what the correct procedure is for that location. So by asking questions, I get someone else to answer the question for me. When it comes to confidential information, I'm hyper vigilant about what I post online and what I share with other people. So I've learned not to put stickers on my car that show where I come from and uh, who I work for. I certainly don't want other parents in my community to come up and try to get information from me about their child or another child. For one, I can't tell them about uh, children at my workplace. And number two, I, I really don't want them to bother me while I'm trying to do my grocery shopping. Uh, when it comes to social media, uh, online, being online and presenting myself in person to other people, I'm usually mindful of what I say and how much information I give out. I'm very selective. I will tell you I'm from this location or this general location in my state, but I'm not going to tell you specifically which town unless I know you that well. I'm not going to give you information about when I go on vacation because I don't want to have to worry about my home when I'm gone. And I get onto people online, uh, or I get onto people who are online and saying, hey, we're going to Disneyland for a week. It's like, great, you just told me when you're gone, so if I was someone who is inclined to rob you, I could. I'm not that I'm that kind of a person, but you just told me. And when it comes to coding, uh, we learn programming languages. One thing I've noticed that kind of translates into your everyday life is you tend to be a little more efficient and direct with your with the language that you do use. If I speak to a coworker about a problem, 
or I want to get information from my friend about what we're doing next week, I'm going to try to be as direct as I can, uh, uh, as direct as I can, and uh, ask them the the questions or lead them into a conversation so I can get what I want right now. <laughs> it sounds a little selfish, but it am, it certainly uh, answers my questions. Speaking of questions, there are no bad questions, especially when you're here today or this week if you go to DEF CON, find someone that has a similar interest or if you run into someone, if you're standing in line, make use of that time and start asking questions. Ask them what kind of industry they're in. Uh, let them tell you personal stories about what they've encountered in their daily lives. And if you want to learn something in specific, don't remain in ignorance, just straight up ask them. If you don't know what a term means, if they use a terminology that you are unaware, unfamiliar with, or you're just not clear on the definition, ask them what it means. Not only does it help you to learn, uh, uh, help you be a little more clear about what's being conveyed to you, but it also helps the person who is mentoring you or speaking to you know your level of understanding and be able to adjust the conversation to reflect that. So really, the, there are no bad questions, just ask. And also, when you go back home, involve everyone because your friends, your family, the people around you at work all have unmet needs that you just might be able to fulfill. One example is that at work every year we have a meeting and my boss will ask, oh, does anyone notice anything we need to change for our safety procedures? Now, if I just came back from, from B-Sides and I picked up on something in a social engineering talk that I thought might be relevant in some way to my workplace, I'm going to let her know, hey, I just learned about this subject and I noticed that we're really vulnerable in this one area or when it comes to physical security, you know, if we've made this quick little change, it might be helpful to us in the end and it might benefit us uh, in terms of keeping our students and our information safe. And uh, I don't want to take credit for it, but there are some changes in the past year that I've noticed that have had connections to things that I've mentioned in the past. It's very nice to see when your bosses and when your coworkers say, hey, I understand that uh, you just learned about this, you want to chat about it, and, and takes your actually takes your ideas and puts some of them into practice. They really take it into consideration. When it comes to my friends and family, again, if they're going on vacation, I try to tell them not to announce it to the world. Uh, in our small town, we have a lot of break-ins. I really don't want to see my friend's house broken into just because they said they were going to be out of state. Uh, and in terms of my my uh, my family, I'm there to offer any help I can in terms of everything from picking out new locks for their house, uh, finding some way, uh, or asking questions to people that are trying to sell security systems to them. If I hear of a scam that's going on, especially if it's targeting the elderly, I'm going to tell my elderly relatives so that they are aware of what's going on in the world around them. Because if I don't tell them, no one else is going to tell them. I, I happen to know that. And even if someone already knows, hey, there's people calling saying they're from the IRS. I don't know if, if my uncle or my aunt has been told. I'm going to tell them anyway because they need to be aware that someone could be targeting them. When it comes to recommendations, a lot of my recommendations have uh, revolved around going out there and just further educating yourself, finding inexpensive uh, ways to gain knowledge. I don't know about a lot of you, but I don't have a lot of money to spend on 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 going back to college and taking expensive classes. So I'm going to go to places like Khan Academy and Code Academy online, which both offer free services and allow me to continue my education, be it just in general programming or uh, uh, specific programming languages. I visit hacker spaces, which they usually have uh, workshops. 
In fact, one of our, our local maker spaces offers workshops uh, monthly and classes, new classes starting up every week. I've also been known to take a few college classes. Our local community college is wonderful. Their tuition isn't horrible <laughs> and isn't going to cost me an arm and a leg to learn something new. Another great way to learn something is to read books and articles. Personally, for me, I benefit from books that just get straight to the point and kind of break things down. So you will see Four Dummies books on my bookshelves. That's, that's, I found that it works for me and I'm going to go with it. And especially this week, interact with others uh, via events, social media, through talking with them one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to gain a lot of knowledge that is not found in books just by hearing their personal experiences. So at this point, I, I know it's kind of short, but any questions? Uh, if there are no questions, then I'm definitely going to uh, say thank you very much for being here for this talk. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Vintage Sister. And if you need to get a hold of me for any reason, that is probably the best way to find me. Thank you. Thank you.